Each year, billions of American taxpayers' dollars are wasted on improper payments to individuals, organizations, and contractors. These are payments made in the wrong amounts to the wrong person or for the wrong reason. It is estimated a loss of $64 billion annually results from fraud, abuse, or errors involving Medicare and Medicaid. Welcome to our program on healthcare fraud and abuse. If you or someone you know receives Medicare or Medicaid benefits, we hope this program will help you understand more about Medicare fraud and abuse and what you can do to help prevent it and protect yourself from becoming a target. My name is Paul Robitaille and I'm the program manager of Coors County Service Link, one of 10 Service Link resource centers throughout New Hampshire. We provide information and connections to resources that help older adults and their families make informed decisions about independent living. At ServiceLink, we listen to your needs, respect your privacy, and help you find answers. And we also support family caregivers, explain long-term care options, and assist with Medicare issues. Helping people who receive Medicare benefits understand how they can protect themselves from fraud and abuse is an important piece of our Medicare work, and it is the focus of our program today. Joining me is Carol Derman. Carol is the State Director of New Hampshire Senior Medicare Patrol. And Becky Rostrin, who works with Medicare issues at the ServiceLink Resource Center in Claremont, which covers Sullivan County. As you just saw in the opening of this program, Medicare fraud and abuse costs American taxpayers a great deal of money each year, money that could be better used for health care benefits. To help prevent these losses, a national program called Senior Medicare Patrol or SMP, is working in every state to help Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries learn how to prevent, detect, and report health care fraud. Through educational programs in the community and through individual help for persons with concerns about their Medicare. Here in New Hampshire, our SMP programs are located at each of the service link resource centers throughout the state, and they offer educational programs about health care fraud and abuse in the community, and individual help for anyone with concerns about their Medicare accounts. Often people wonder what is meant by Medicare fraud. What does it look like? Carol can give a few examples of what we mean by Medicare fraud and how people on Medicare can become targets. Sure, Paul. Basically, Medicare fraud is like stealing, and it's intentional. It could involve billing for a service that wasn't received. You might see a charge on your Medicare summary notice for something that you didn't get or that your doctor never ordered. Or it could be a scam with someone coming to your door or calling you on the phone and offering you something for free in exchange for giving them your Medicare number. The Administration on Aging has done a great job in showing some of these scams at work and explaining what you should watch for and do if anything like this happens to you. Let's watch. I've already got eight Medicare numbers and I'm going for number nine. <laughs> These prescription drug cards look just like the real thing. like Medicare would really pay for a housekeeper. <laughs> Some people will believe anything. The people you just saw are actors, but the scams they're acting out aren't made up. They really happened, and they're likely to keep on happening. But if you know what to watch for, they won't happen to you. If you can remember three words, protect, detect, report, I'll help you through the rest. The hard part is, Without the music and the sound effects, the bad guys can be hard to spot. They appear to be very helpful people. This is packed with nutrients and vitamins to keep you healthy. You're not the only one confused by Medicare Part D, but the plan that we're offering is actually completely straightforward and at a very low price. Just a flat fee of $2.99. So I'll send someone once a week to give you a medical checkup and clean your house. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'll submit this form to Medicare and they'll cover my fee. Those friendly people are involved in some of the most common Medicare scams around. Scams that cost both the government and you. It's obvious when you think about it. When Medicare pays out to people like them, there's less money available for legitimate Medicare claims. Fraudulent Medicare claims add up to billions of dollars every year. So it's worth taking a closer look. Let's start with the phone scam. I'm with Medicare, and we're calling to help you understand our Medicare Part D. Did you hear the first red flag? I'm with Medicare. A lot of people work for Medicare, but they are not allowed to make cold calls. No, you don't have to pay me the $2.99 now. I can bill you for it. But first, I actually need to verify your Medicare number. Uh, do you have your card handy so you could read me that number? Red flag number two. Did you catch it? You might think this is only about cheating you out of $299, but you're wrong. Your Medicare number is worth more to him than $299 that comes out of your bank account. With that information, he can steal your identity, set up fake credit cards, order equipment, or worse. It's critical that you protect that number. Let me read that number back to you. Uh, 432. If this guy really worked for Medicare, he wouldn't need to ask you for your number over the phone. He'd already have it. Sometimes the story changes. The cost of the Iraq war is taking money from Medicare. And if you're relying on that, you could be in trouble. I'm calling to offer you an alternative prescription plan. It's just $2.99. Yep, that's right. It's only $2.75. Yep, that's right. It's just $3.29. Of course, the art of stealing Medicare numbers doesn't just happen over the phone. Hi. I work with the health department and we're delivering these free nutritional supplements to people who are on Medicare. It's part of a preventative health care program and all you need to take part is proof that you're a Medicare recipient. I take vitamins. I don't need that. Well, our research shows that because vitamins can get expensive, people tend to stop taking them as they get older, which is precisely when they need them most. That's why we deliver these free every week, so you'll be more likely to keep up your healthy habits. I just need to see your Medicare card. Just a minute. Free. Did that word set off the alarm bells ringing in your head? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Once you know what Medicare covers, you can detect frauds like this and avoid being part of them. Okay, I'll just record your number. Now that he has her number, he can make a Medicare claim. And you know nutritional supplements aren't the only thing he delivers. State-of-the-art wheelchairs, scooters, diabetic supplies, heating pads. Most of the time, what he delivers is not what the doctor ordered, but once he delivers something, he can make a claim. The bill goes to Medicare, and he pockets the profit. What you'll probably start with is the laundry. The laundry? The government doesn't do laundry. What else does she do? Oh, she does a great job on windows. And the government definitely doesn't do windows. Medicare is strictly medical, but there are plenty of people who are offered to clean your house, bring you groceries, even wash your hair on Medicare's dime. So I just submit this form to Medicare every week. And all we need from you now is your signature on the registry, your name, and your Medicare number. Do you have that card, sir? Excellent. So let's uh, start with the signature right there. Okay. Again with a Medicare number. By now, you know the story. She offers a little, then takes a lot from the government. She may not even send a qualified nurse. And chances are good she won't even show up next week. That kind of scam can be really tempting. She's offering something you'd like to have. Other people take the scam even further. Some drive a medical van around offering to do medical tests you don't need, just so they can bill Medicare for them. In Idaho, seniors were rounded up and taken on a trip to Las Vegas. Then Medicare was billed for a week of medical supervision. It's not enough to turn down an offer like this. You also need to report it so the Medicare abuse can be stopped. Now, I've put the odds in your favor. 
You've seen how important it is to protect your card and keep your Medicare number out of the wrong hands. When Medicare is ripped off, people who rely on the program and deserve its benefits are the ones at risk. More than 42 million people, in fact. Here's what you've learned and what you should tell your friends. Medicare doesn't make cold calls. Medicare doesn't go door to door. And Medicare doesn't offer free services. But they do. You can avoid being a victim of fraud. Remember to protect, detect, and report. Protect your Medicare number as you would your bank account number or a credit card. Detect fraudulent scams by knowing what Medicare does and doesn't cover and report suspicious behavior. Protect, detect, report. If you suspect you've been a victim of Medicare fraud or would like to learn more about avoiding and preventing health care fraud, contact your local SMP program. For more information about New Hampshire SMP, contact ServiceLink. Call us toll free at 866-634-9412 or visit us online at www.servicelink.org. So anytime you receive a phone call or door-to-door -door visits asking for your Medicare number, be suspicious. Be cautious about giving your personal information. And if you did get a call or a visit, like the ones you just saw, give ServiceLink a call to let us know. Not every case is fraud. Sometimes Medicare is billed incorrectly. It's not intentional. It's a mistake. But it's important to keep an eye on your Medicare summary notices to be sure mistakes are caught and corrected if they happen to your Medicare number. Thanks, Carol. The video introduced us to the three key words or steps that SMP wants everyone to remember. Protect, detect, and report. Becky, will you talk to us a little bit about more about the importance of protecting our personal information and some tips for doing that? Sure, Paul. Well, the best way to protect yourself from becoming a victim of healthcare fraud is to learn more about it and then take some simple steps to protect yourself. One very important thing that we tell people is to treat their Medicare card like a credit card or a bank card. Keep it in a safe place and don't carry it in your wallet or purse unless you need it. Only take it to doctor's appointments, visits to your hospital or clinic, or trips to the pharmacy. Don't give out your Medicare number, except to your doctor or other Medicare provider. Never give it to a stranger. Another reason to protect your Medicare card is because it could also be your social security number. So someone who steals your Medicare number also has your social security number and can steal your identity. It's also a good idea to keep a record of your doctor visits and other medical treatments so you can check it against the charges on your Medicare summary notice. This can often uncover inappropriate charges or billing mistakes. And shred old bills and summary notices that you no longer need so that your information isn't readily available for someone to pick up and use. Thanks, Becky. So it's important to protect your Medicare card and number. Now, what about ways to detect possible problems in your Medicare account? Carol mentioned earlier the Medicare summary notice. So I'll ask her to tell us what that is and what you should be looking for when it comes in the mail. Sure, Paul. If you are already on Medicare, you probably are familiar with your Medicare summary notice. Sometimes it's called an MSN. It's not a bill, it's a notice that people with original Medicare get in the mail every three months for their Medicare Part A and Part B covered services. The Medicare Summary Notice shows all your services or supplies that providers and suppliers bill to Medicare during the three-month period, what Medicare paid, and the maximum amount you may owe the provider. If you didn't get any services or supplies during a three-month period, you won't get a Medicare Summary Notice in the mail for that particular three-month period. When you do get a Medicare summary notice in the mail, you should check for three things. First, check for charges for something you didn't receive. Second, check for billing for the same thing twice. And third, 
Check for services that were not ordered by your doctor. As Becky mentioned previously, it's a good idea to keep your own record of your doctor visits and medical services. You can put it on a calendar or in a notebook, or we have a personal health record that is available for you at ServiceLink. Then you can compare your own record to what you see on your Medicare summary notice. If you see charges that you don't understand or services that you didn't receive, it could mean that there's been a billing mistake or that someone is using your Medicare number to bill inappropriately. I have an example. There was a lady who received a, her hospital bill and she had been to the hospital and had a hip replacement. The bill was for speech therapy and she brought it to ServiceLink it was in Rockingham County, and they investigated and corrected the bill and corrected her Medicare summary notice. So we've talked about ways to protect ourselves and what to look for to detect possible fraud or mistakes. That brings us to the last key step, to report your observations or concerns. Becky, can you tell us how people can report something that doesn't seem right and what they can expect when they do? Sure, Paul. One thing people can do if they have a question about a charge from their doctor or another medical provider that they don't understand is to call the provider's office and ask them about it. Often, if it's a mistake, one call can take care of it. But sometimes, people aren't comfortable in calling a provider's office. They might feel embarrassed or anxious about it. So we want people to know that they can always get personal assistance through the SMP program at their local ServiceLink Resource Center. We'll listen to your questions and concerns and help get issues resolved. We can go over your statements and summary notices with you if needed. And if a problem is spotted that needs more review, we'll help by referring it to the proper Medicare office for additional review. And our services are always free and confidential. We hope you'll remember that S&P services are a part of Medicare assistance, and that is available to you and all people throughout New Hampshire through the ServiceLink Resource Centers located in every county. Our specifically trained S&P staff and volunteers provide outreach and education in communities throughout the state, as well as meet with individuals whenever they see or experience something that doesn't seem right. And in doing so, they not only protect all the persons, but they help stop the large losses to the Medicare and Medicaid programs and preserve them for the future. Like SMP programs all across the country, New Hampshire SMP depends on volunteers to help with outreach and educational programs in the community. And I'll let Carol talk about volunteer opportunities. Yes, thanks, Paul. ServiceLink depends on their trained staff and SMP volunteers to help provide information about healthcare fraud and abuse throughout our state. Some volunteers enjoy helping with group presentations. Others assist with SMP displays at community events. Some volunteers may be interested in providing that one-on-one -on -one counseling to Medicare beneficiaries or offering administrative help in the ServiceLink offices. Whatever their role, SMP volunteers are a valued member of the ServiceLink team. They receive training and support for their role and enjoy meeting, working with, and helping many people. Often, they are retired and Medicare beneficiaries themselves, so they are really a good fit for working with their peers. If you are interested in learning more about our volunteer opportunities, please contact your local service link. The toll-free number on the screen will connect you to the Service Link Resource Center in your area, so give us a call. I'd like to thank Becky Rostrom and Carol German for joining me today to talk about Medicare fraud and abuse in the Senior Medicare Patrol or SMP program. And thanks to all of you for watching. Remember that for all your Medicare questions, Service Link is just a phone call away. Call us for information about any of our services or to find out about our volunteer opportunities. We're happy to hear from you. So be smart. Protect your identity and your Medicare benefits 
by treating your Medicare and other health insurance cards in the same way you would protect your credit cards. Only giving personal information to Medicare approved doctors, providers, and suppliers, Social Security, or the Medicare staff at ServiceLink. Shredding papers with your personal information before putting them in the trash. Avoiding free offers in exchange for your Medicare number. And reviewing your Medicare summary notices and other statements in medical bills for any charges that seem suspicious or incorrect. And remember, for all your Medicare questions, call your local ServiceLink Resource Center. The toll-free number on the screen will automatically connect you to the ServiceLink in your area.